In this tutorial, we'll introduce sequential differences. Let's start off with a sequence of squares, which we'll call little a sub n. The numbers in this sequence are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, etc. We can label the partial sums of this sequence as capital A sub n. What are the partial sums of this sequence? To find the partial sums, we add the terms one at a time. The first partial sum is just one. To find the next partial sum, we do one plus four, which is five. To find the next partial sum, we add the third term to get 14. And then we add the fourth term to get 30, and so on. The only sequence that matches that is this one here. Right, there are 1, 5, 14, 30, 55, 91, and so on. So these are the partial sums of the sequence up here. Now let's make another sequence, but this one will contain the differences between consecutive or neighboring terms in this original sequence. Our original sequence was written as little a sub n, and this sequence that contains the differences we'll label as little a sub n, but with a mark up here. You can read this as little a sub n prime. The first term up here doesn't have any number in front of it, so we'll just write it down as the first term down here. And now the first two terms of the top sequence are 1 and 4. The difference between them, meaning the second term minus the first term, is 3. The next term in this sequence, a prime, is 9 minus 4, which is 5. What are the next three terms in this sequence down here? Let's keep taking differences. The difference of those two terms is 7, so the next term is 7. The difference of those two terms is 9, so the next term is 9. And the term after that is this difference here, which is 11. 7, 9, and 11 is this first answer. Right. 16 minus 9 is 7, 25 minus 16 is 9, and 36 minus 25 is 11. These terms here are known as the sequential differences of the original series. So for any series a1, a2, a3, a4, and so on, the sequential differences are a1, a2 minus a1, a3 minus a2, a4 minus a3, and so on. So if you have a sequence where the nth term is n squared, can you find a formula that will give you the nth sequential difference? a sub n prime is a sub n minus a sub n minus 1. The formula for a sub n is this, so that means a sub n prime is equal to n squared, that's a sub n, and putting n minus 1 in here, so n minus 1, we'll get n minus 1 squared. So this is going to be minus n minus 1 squared. Expanding it gives us n squared minus n squared minus 2n plus 1. Distributing the minus sign gives us n squared minus n squared plus 2n minus 1. The n squareds cancel out, and we're left with 2n minus 1. Yes, it's 2n minus 1. Let's just write that as 2 times n to the first power minus 1. For a sequence of cubes, the sequential differences are 3n squared minus 3n plus 1. For a sequence of cortex, or n to the fourth power, the leading term, meaning the term with the highest power, of the expression for sequential differences is 4n cubed. Do you see a pattern here? For a sequence where the nth term is n to the kth power, what do you think is the leading term of the formula for the sequential differences? Let's try looking for some patterns. The first thing you'll notice is that the leading coefficient, the number in front of the first term, is always exactly the same as the power of the original sequence. So if the power of the original sequence is k, that's going to be k for the leading coefficient. Next, they all have an n, so we can put that in. And then the exponent for the n 
is always one less than that leading coefficient. So here we have a 4, and this is a 3. The 3 leading coefficient here has a 2 for an exponent up here, and the 2 leading coefficient here has a 1 for an exponent. So if the leading coefficient is k, the exponent is going to be k minus 1. And then there will be some more terms. So the leading term is k times n to the k minus 1. Well done. It's k times n to the k minus 1. You might not think of sequences as having slopes and areas, but you'll see what we mean in a minute. Here's your typical sequence. Now let's turn each term in the sequence into a bar. The width of each bar is 1, and the height of each bar is the value of the corresponding term in the sequence. So this bar has height a1, this bar has height a2, and so on. What's the area of the first bar over here? The first bar is a rectangle. The base here has a width of 1 because it goes from 0 to 1. The height is a1, the value of the sequence there. So the area is a1 times 1, or just a1. Right. The area of each bar is its base times its height. We said the base of all the bars is 1, so the areas of the bars are equal to the heights of the bars, which are the numbers in the sequence. Okay, so what's the combined area of the bars, which we can call the area under the bars, between 0 and 5 on the horizontal axis? That's the darker blue area over here. The area of the first five bars is just the sum of each area. We said the area of the first bar is a1. The area of the second bar is a2, for the same reason. The third bar is a3. The fourth is a4. And the fifth is a5. So the area of all of them combined is just the sum of the areas. Exactly. The area of the dark region is the sum of the areas of these five bars. So that's a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 plus a5. What's another way to write the sum? The index of a partial sum tells us how many terms we're summing. So the fourth partial sum is the sum of the first four terms. Here we're summing five terms, so this is the fifth partial sum. Yeah, the sum of the first five terms in a sequence equals the fifth partial sum, which we can write as capital A5. So you found that the area, meaning the area when we turn the sequence into bars that each have a width of 1, that area of the sequence between 0 and n on the horizontal axis is the nth partial sum of the sequence. Okay, next question. Suppose you want to find the area of the bar shown here, between 3 and 7 on the horizontal axis. Which of the following is a formula for this area? To find the area of the dark region, one strategy is to find the area of everything all the way up to here, and then subtract the area of things that we don't want to include. The area of everything is a sub 7. It's the sum of the first seven areas. And the stuff we don't want to include here is the sum of the first three areas. If we do that subtraction, we'll be left with the area of the dark region here, which is exactly what we want. Right again. It's the seventh partial sum minus the third partial sum. So the area between m and n on the horizontal axis equals the nth partial sum minus the mth partial sum. Partial sums give you the areas of sequences. 
So that was areas of sequences. Now let's look at slopes. Again, let's use the same bar graph for the sequence. What's the slope between the top middle of the fourth and fifth bars? The slope here is equal to the change in y over the change in x. The change in x is the distance from this center to this center. This is three and a half, and this is four and a half, so the change in x is just one. The change in y is this y coordinate minus that y coordinate, which is just a sub five minus a sub four. So the slope is just a sub five minus a sub four. Yeah, it's a5 minus a4. What's another way to write this difference? The formula for the differences of a sequence is given by a sub n prime equals a sub n minus a sub n minus 1. So here we have a sub 5 minus a sub 4. So if 5 was n and 4 was n minus 1, we'd have a difference. Specifically, this would be a sub 5 prime. Exactly. a5 minus a4 is the fifth sequential difference for this sequence. Sequential differences give us the slopes between terms when sequences are plotted as bar graphs. To summarize here, when you plot sequences as bar graphs, partial sums give you the areas of different parts of the sequences and sequential differences give you the slopes. In this tutorial, we'll see how sequential differences and partial sums are related. But in this tutorial, we'll start off with the final result first. Pick any sequence you want. Let's call it AN. Now find its partial sums, and let's call that sequence capital AN. Now find the sequential differences of the partial sums. That sequence we'll call capital AN prime. Guess what? That last sequence will always be the exact same sequence that you started with. And the same thing happens if we switch the order of the steps. Start with any sequence you want, find the sequential differences of that sequence, and then find the partial sums of that sequence, and you get your original sequence back again. Now let's figure out exactly why this happens. Suppose you start with an arbitrary sequence. Let's say it's A1, A2, A3, and so on. The partial sums of the sequence are A1, A1 plus A2, A1 plus A2 plus A3, and so on. Now let's find the sequential differences of this sequence. Remember that the first sequential difference is just the first term of the sequence, so that's a1. What's the second sequential difference in this sequence? The second sequential difference is this expression, a1 plus a2, minus this expression, a1. So it's a1 plus a2 minus a1. This a1 cancels with this a1, and we're left with a2. So A2 is the second sequential difference. Right, it's A2. Since that's the second term, A1 plus A2 minus the first term, A1. The third term down here is A1 plus A2 plus A3 minus A1 plus A2. So that's A3. And if we kept finding more and more terms in the sequence, we'd find that it's indeed equal to our original sequence. Okay, now let's switch the order around. Here's our original sequence again, but this time let's find the sequential differences first, and then we'll find the partial sums. Again, remember that the first sequential difference is just the first term of the sequence, that's a1. What's the second sequential difference? The second sequential difference is this term, a2, minus this term, a1. So it's a2 minus a1. 
Right. It's A2 minus A1. The next two sequential differences are A3 minus A2 and A4 minus A3. Okay, now let's find the partial sums of this sequence here. The first partial sum is A1. The second partial sum is the sum of these two terms here. The A1s cancel out, leaving us with A2. So A2 is the second partial sum. What's the third partial sum? So the third partial sum is the sum of all three of these terms. So that's A1 plus A2 minus A1 plus A3 minus A2. The A1s cancel out, and the A2s cancel out. That leaves just A3. So A3 is the third partial sum. Yes, the third partial sum is A3, the fourth is A4, and so on. Once again, we have our original sequence back. Partial sums, which are the areas of sequences when you plot them as bar graphs, and sequential differences, which are the slopes of those sequences, undo each other's effects on sequences, similar to how inverse functions undo each other's effects.